I think it's going in absolutely the right direction. We need to, we should have given them more, <coughs> especially the Americans. Actually, we should have given them more uh, uh, weapons back, not just one year ago, perhaps three or four years ago. We, the United Kingdom, should be proud of what it's done. But I'm afraid at the moment, you know, they we need to help them. We need to not fuss about whether or not they've been gra- grateful. Now, the NATO summit has drawn to a close in Lithuania after two days. G7 leaders have signed a package of long-term security guarantees for Ukraine. Rishi Sunak says it marks a new high point in international support for the country, but President Zelensky has been critical of the lack of a clear time frame for Ukraine to become a member of the alliance. And the Defence Secretary Ben Wallace, who's been at the summit, risked a further diplomatic risk by suggesting that Ukraine should show more gratitude for the military support it's receiving from NATO allies. He's reported to have said, I'm not Amazon, when presented with a list of weapons and other equipment requested by Ukrainian forces. Well, President Zelensky was swift to dismiss suggestions of a lack of gratitude. I believe that we were always grateful to the United Kingdom. We were always uh, grateful to the Prime Minister or to Prime Ministers and to the Minister of Defence because the people in uh, United Kingdom have been always supporting Ukraine. We are grateful for this. I didn't know uh, what he meant and how else we should be grateful. Let him write me how else should I uh, express my words of gratitude. Or we could, you know, get up in the morning and uh, express our words of gratitude personally to the minister. Really, I, I don't understand the, the essence of the question. And Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister, also distanced himself from the remarks of his Defence Secretary. President Zelensky has expressed his gratitude for what we've done on a number of occasions, and not least in his incredibly moving address that he made to Parliament earlier this year, and he's done so again to me, uh, as he has done countless times when I've met him. So I know he and his people are incredibly grateful for the support the UK has shown, the welcome that we've provided to many Ukrainian families, but also the leadership that we've shown throughout this conflict, as I mentioned, often being the first to, to move support forward, whether it was with the provision of tanks or indeed long-range weapons. Uh, and I'd say he's uh, enormously grateful for that. But people across Ukraine are also fighting for their lives and freedom every single day. Well, let's talk to Lord Robethon, who's a former Conservative Defence Minister. Good evening to you, Lord Robethon. Hello, Carol. Um, there's an issue here which is that we're in the middle of a division. I need to go and vote in about one minute. Well, just tell us then, do you think that Ben Wallace, the Defence Secretary, was a bit undiplomatic in his comments earlier? I think he said some slightly unfortunate things, rather as the Prime Minister obviously said. I think it was unwise to say these things. Um, look, the Ukrainians are fighting for their lives. They've been pretty grateful to us. We've done a bloody good job at giving them stuff. They've always said thank you, as far as I'm aware, but we need to continue to support them because actually they're fighting for their lives, for the existence of their country. And does it sound a little bit petty if you have a British defence minister saying, oh, they should be a bit more grateful for what we're giving them when, of course, the Ukrainians have been making the point throughout that they're they're fighting for freedom. They're the ones standing up to President well, Putin. Car- Carol, I'm, I'm not going to call the uh, defence secretary petty, but I think, you know, they are fighting for their lives. Imagine what is going on in Ukraine. It is beyond what we have known in our lives. It's back to almost the First World War and the Second World War. It's absolutely shocking, and they're fighting bloody hell. They're fighting well, and we should support them. Well, if you have time to answer one more, um, how significant do you think was the package of support that was agreed, these long-term security guarantees from NATO and the G7? I think it's going in absolutely the right direction. We need to, we should have given them more, <coughs> especially the Americans, actually. We should have given them more uh, uh, weapons back, not just one year ago, perhaps three or four years ago. We, The United Kingdom should be proud of what it's done. But I'm afraid at the moment, you know, they we need to help them. We need to not fuss about whether or not they've been gra- grateful. We need to make sure that we give them the, uh, the tools to finish the job. 
which is, I think, a Churchill line. And I'm going to go and vote. Excuse me, Carol. Lord Robethon, uh, former Defence Minister, really good to speak to you. I'll let you go and vote. Um, thank you very much.